Well, I, I think what's there to be done is the life he now leads. And, you know, that's at the field, but also, and more importantly, away from the field, the life he's leading. You know, he he has done enough to earn the opportunity to be here and to compete and to be a part of this team. Now the proof is in, in the daily life that he leads. And um, we're certainly going to do all we can to support him and, and help him to become the best version of of himself possible um but you know now now the proof will be in the in the in the days ahead we go next to lindsay adler please unmute and over the last few days we've heard a number of your players being pretty candid about things and not to a point them but um what has your experience been like for you guys talking about domingo garrett talking about uh the labor issues what do you think the value is and players being sort of more open to an extent about, about their perspectives on sport and, and, their, uh, and their experiences within it. Yeah, I mean, we're probably seeing more of that across the board, which, which I think is a good thing. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's existed throughout time, though, in sports. You know, some people are outspoken about things. And, you know, one of the things we've certainly encouraged our guys that if something, you know, you're passionate about, um, you know, whether it's, you know, labor issues, whether it's social issues, um, whatever it may be, if something's heavy on your mind and heart and you feel like you want to um, speak on that, um, by all means, you have that opportunity, you have that platform, you have that right. And uh, I, I think by and large, we're seeing more and more acceptance of that and appreciation of, of you know, people and athletes and entertainers, you know, having their opinions and, and allowing them to be heard. Uh, Brendan Cutting, please unmute. You have the next question. Aaron, what did you think of seeing Tyone for the first time against Edison? Yeah, um, I thought he was good. I thought he started out a little bit slow, and I really li liked how he finished. Um, I thought his stuff, as he got going on, got really crisp. Um, I really liked overall, you know, starting with Jamison, really I thought by and large our pitchers threw well, but likewise I thought our hitters were really grinding away and, and giving really competitive at-bats. Bat, at so I thought it was a real competitive environment. And, and, and you know, Jamo I think saw, you know, seeing Judge and Hicks and Frazier and not, not sure who else he saw, but guys that obviously really control and know the strike zone and, um, you know, got an early look here in February that against those guys you really got to execute and I thought it was a really good another good step for JMO and and I really liked how he finished um I thought his stuff really crisp got crisp as he went on uh Brian Hoke please unmute you have the next question hey Aaron uh we've talked a lot about Domingo from the clubhouse perspective uh from a baseball perspective where do you see him right now how close is he to the guy you had in September 2019 and what have you seen so far on the field I mean I I like what I've seen um you know he's he's thrown a couple bullpens he's been sharp he's been crisp uh you know he's in good shape uh you know kind of going through our assessments with strength and conditioning and training you know he came in in, in a good spot and in good shape and and that's what he's demonstrated so far in just his couple of bullpens but you know that, that's a long time ago you know that's a year and a half ago when he was you know at the top of his game and uh there's nothing that suggests he can't get back to that point to being that kind of player but i would also caution that we're very early in the game as far as you know him working his way back but so far i've liked what i've seen mm -hmm. we go next to pete caldera pete unmute Aaron, uh, what do you recall from the time uh, last October when John Carlos Stanton was on that uh, postseason home run tear? And, and uh, what are your thoughts about uh, where he is now as he comes into the camp? I, I think it was consistent to really, I think, the last couple of years, if you hear my comments, and, and um, I've always kind of talked about where I think he's gone to as a hitter and as an approach and in his focus. And I feel like. You know, we saw what I what I feel like had he been healthy in night in in nineteen and twenty, a lot of what we would have seen throughout those seasons. Um, I was obviously really happy for him, you know, um, for him to go and produce at such a high level on 
on a big stage against the best of competition. Um, but I really feel like that's what he's capable of. And I, and I feel like through these injuries, I've seen a guy that, you know, and, and I think it's just the evolution and the maturity of a, of a great and talented player, um, you know, playing in New York, I think he's learned how to navigate that. Um, and I just think, again, I think if he can stay healthy, um, he's going to turn in a special season. I, I think he's, in a lot of ways, a much better hitter than even he was when he when he won his MVP several years ago. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We can go to Ron Blum. Ron, go ahead. Hi, Aaron. From what you've seen so far, do you have any thoughts yet on where the competition is with Herman and Garcia and King for fifth starters? Is it, are they all even going forward, or do you have... I, I, look, I think they, they're all in that mix, um, you know, and I think you can expand the list even more when you talk about Wojgowski and Chassin and, uh, you know, and if we go down that road with the Nick Nelson and um, there's a number of guys and, and, you know, one of the things I've talked about at the start of this camp is I feel like from a depth standpoint, you know, our 10, 11 or so potential starters, I feel like... Uh, all wouldn't surprise me if, if any of them are impacting our club early or at some point in the season. So I'm just looking forward to seeing how it plays out, who kind of emerges and maybe declares himself. But again, I think coming off of last season and, and with whether it's some of our younger pitchers getting built up, um, whether it's guys returning from injury, we're going to need to lean on a number of guys, and that's why the depth's important. And at this point, um, I feel really good about who could possibly emerge. So it, it'll play itself out and de declare itself as we go. You see Herman has someone who's either a starter or at uh, the alternate site, or would you consider him also as a possibility? Yeah, I think uh, I would say everything's on the table. We certainly consider him a starter. Um, but again, you know, we might get a little bit creative too in that first, especially the first month of the season where you have a few do few off days in the first couple of weeks. You're trying to build guys up and protect guys, especially early in some of the colder weather. So, um, you know, we could get a little creative with guys, but I certainly feel like Domingo is a starter, but, um, you know, he, he could be a weapon in a lot of different ways as well. Thank you. Yeah. We can go next to Sweeney Murdy. Aaron, both you and Brian have talked about the impact that uh, the shutdown had on Gleyber Torres and the shape he came into in summer camp. How does he look now compared to what he looked like last summer? Great. He looks great. It's... Um... <clears throat> You know, I don't mean to overstate it, but one of the first things I did the other day when, when guys went through their physicals and assessments was at the end of the day, you know, kind of went in and, and met with, you know, Eric Cressy and Brett McCabe and Matt Rutledge just to kind of get an idea where we're at. And um, I think they were really, really impressed with across the board where guys came in, and, and Glaber certainly fit that bill. He's in great shape, and, you know, if you guys get a chance to see him up close, he, he looks good, he's moving well, and um, excited to see what he's going to go do for us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Meredith Morakovic, please unmute. Aaron, Luke Floyd had a pretty big year last year from a power perspective. He spoke earlier about ma wanting to make some strides defensively this season. What type of growth would you like to see from him this season, considering the solid year he had a year ago? Yeah, I think I think continuing, just continuing to get a little bit better at his game um, and defensively is part of that. Um, I feel like even from 19 to last year, defensively, I felt like he made a lot of strides. Now, where, you know, where not even taking a step back, but where he got hurt up a little bit last year was, you know, the foot issue that he was dealing with where it didn't really affect him, obviously, at, at the plate. It probably did cut down on him in the field a little bit and just his ability to move laterally, um, you know, move, you know, as efficiently as he should. So um, hopefully health 
and, and just being in a better place physically heading into the season, you'll see a natural uptick on the defensive side just in his agility and his ability to move. Has he looked any different this spring, or is it the same as last spring? It was just that injury that then kind of set him back a little bit. Yeah, I think similar. You know, hopefully he's, you know, improved incrementally, and um, as you continue to work and, you know, bust it at your craft. Um, so he's looked good so far, and, uh, yeah, hopefully, you know, he can stay a lot more healthy and, and it improves his agility.